Then Jacob continued on his journey and came to the land of the eastern peoples. There he saw a well in the open country, with three flocks of sheep lying near it because the flocks were watered from that well. The stone over the mouth of the well was large. When all the flocks were gathered there, the shepherds would roll the stone away from the well's mouth and water the sheep. Then they would return the stone to its place over the mouth of the well. Jacob asked the shepherds, My brothers, where are you from? We're from Haran, they replied. Oh, <laughs> He said to them, Do you know Laban, Nahor's grandson? Yes, we know him, they answered. Then Jacob asked them, Is he well? Yes, he is. They said, and here, and here comes his daughter Rachel with the sheep. Look, he said, the sun is still high. It's not time for the flocks to be gathered. Water the sheep and take them back to pasture. Well, we can't, they replied, until all the flocks are gathered and the stone has been rolled away from the mouth of the well. Then we will water the sheep. While he was still talking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for the, for she was a shepherd. When Jacob saw Rachel, daughter of his uncle Laban, and oh, and watered his wait his his mother's brother and Laban's sheep, he went over and rolled the stone away from the mouth of the well and watered his uncle's sheep. Then Jacob kissed Rachel and began to weep aloud. He had told Rachel that he was a relative of her father and a son of Rebekah. So she ran and told her father. As soon as Levon heard the news about Jacob, his sister's son, he hurried to meet him. He embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his home. And there Jacob told him all these things. Then Levon said to him, You are my own flesh and blood. Jacob marries Leah and Rachel. After Jacob had stayed with him for a whole month, Levon said to him, Just because you're a relative of mine, should you work for me for nothing? Tell me what your wages should be. Now Levon had two daughters. The name of the older was Leah and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah had weak eyes, but Rachel had a lovely figure and was beautiful. Jacob was in love with Rachel and said, I'll work for you for seven years in return for your younger daughter, Rachel. Levon said, that's better if I give her to you than to some other man. Stay here with me. So Jacob served seven years to get Rachel, but they seemed like only a few days to him because of his love for her. Then Jacob said to Levon, Give me my wife. My time is completed and I want to lie with her. So Levon brought together all the people of the place and gave a feast. But when evening came, he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob. And Jacob made love to her, and Levon gave his servant Zilpah to his daughter as her attendant. When morning came, there was Leah. So Jacob said to Levon, What is this you've done to me? I served you for Rachel, didn't I? Why have you deceived me? Levon replied, It's not our custom here to give the younger daughter in marriage before the older one. Finish this daughter's bridal week, then we will give you the younger one. Also, in return for another seven years of work. And Jacob did so. He finished the week with Leah, and then Levon gave him his daughter Rachel to be his wife. Levon gave his servant Bilhah to his daughter Rachel as her attendant. Jacob made love to Rachel also, and his love for Rachel was greater than his love for Leah. And he worked for Levon another seven years. When the Lord saw that Leah was not loved, he enabled her to conceive, but Rachel remained childless. Leah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Reuben, for she said, oh, that's your name. It is because the Lord has seen my misery. Surely my husband will love me now. She conceived again, and when she gave birth to a son, she said, Because the Lord heard that I am not loved, he gave me this one too. So she named him Simeon. One just a second. So um, I think it'll help us as we understand the passage for to read the little cliff notes on the name. Uh, Reuben means it sounds like the Hebrew for uh, he has seen my misery, mm -hmm. 
Um, and then Sui means one who hears. One who hears. I guess so she's naming. Okay, cool. Five eggs. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, again, she conceived, and when she gave birth to son, she said, "Now at last, my husband will become attracted to me because I have born him three sons." So he was named Levi. Which sounds like attached in Hebrew. Oh my gosh. She conceived again and when she gave birth to a son, she said, This time I will praise the Lord. So she named him Judah. Then she stopped what? having children. Ju Judah sounds like praise. Yeah. When Rachel saw that she was not bearing Jacob any children, she became jealous of her sister. So she said to Jacob, Give me children or I'll die. <laughs> Jake, stop, buddy. <laughs> I said the same thing. Jacob became angry with her and said, Am I in the place of God who has kept you from having children? Then she said, Here is Bilbus, my maid servant. Leave with her so she can bear children for me, and that through her I too can build a family. Hmm. So she gave him her servant Bilha as a wife. Jacob mm -hmm. slept with her, and she became pregnant and bore him a son. Then Rachel said, God has vindicated me. He has listened to my plea and given me a son. Because of this, she named him Dan. Which sounds like he has, er, which means he has vindicated. Okay. Rachel's servant, Bilhah, conceived again and bore Jacob a second son. Then Rachel said, I have had a great struggle with my sister. And I have one. So she named him Naphtali. Which means my struggle. When Leah saw that she had stopped having children, she took her servant Zilpah and gave her to Jacob as a wife. Leah's servant Zilpah bore Jacob a son. Then Leah said, What good fortune. So she named him Gad, which probably means good fortune. <laughs> yeah, Gad can mean good fortune or a troop. Pro good, probably here in this, it probably mean good fortune. Mm -hmm. Leah's servant Zilpah bore Jacob a second son. Then Leah said, How happy I am. The women will call me happy. So she named him Asher. Which means happy. Which I still, I still love that name. During wheat harvest, Reuben went out into the fields and found some mandrake plants, which he brought to his mother, Leah. Rachel said to Leah, Please give me some of your son's mandrake. But she said to her, Wasn't it enough that you took away my husband? Will you take my son's mandrake too? Um, I, I can do Rachel, Mom. Um, okay. Very well. Rachel said. He can sleep with you tonight and return for your son's mandrakes. So then Jacob came in from the fields that evening. Leah went out to meet him. You must sleep with me, she said. I have hired you with my son's mandrakes. So he slept with her that night. God listened to Leah and she became pregnant and bore Jacob a fifth son. Then Leah said, God has rewarded me for giving my maid to my husband. So she named him Isaacar. Which, uh, Isaacar sounds like the Hebrew for reward. Oh, Isaacar. Sorry. Leah conceived again in, oh my God. <laughs> you think Jacob would get tired. <laughs> 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 Leah conceived again in born Jacob, a sixth son. Then Leah said, God has presented me with a precious gift. This time my husband will treat me with honor because I have borne him six sons. So she named him Zibelin. Which probably means honor. Sometime later she gave birth to a daughter and named her Dinah. Then God remembered Rachel. He listened to her and enabled her to conceive. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son and said, God has taken away my disgrace. She named him Joseph. And said, Joseph means he added, uh, May the Lord add to me another son. After Rachel gave birth to Joseph, Jacob said to Levon, 
Send me on my way so I can go back to my own homeland. Give me, give me my wives and children for whom I have served you, and I'll be on my way. You know how much work I've done for you. But Laban said to him, Mom, do you want to be Laban? Sure. If I have found favor in your eyes, please say, I have learned by divination that the Lord has blessed me because of you. He added, Name your wages and I will pay them. Jacob said to him, You know how I've worked for you and how your livestock has fared under my care. The little you had before I came has increased greatly, and the Lord has blessed you wherever I have been. But now, when may I do something for my own household? What shall I give you? He asked. Uh, don't give me anything. Jacob replied. But if you'll do this one thing for me, I will go on tending your flocks and watching over them. Let me go through all of your flocks today and remove from them every speckled or spotted sheep, every dark colored lamb, and every spot, speckled or spotted goat. They'll be my wages and my honesty will testify for me in the future whenever you check on the wages you have paid me. Any goat in my possession that is not speckled or spotted, or any land that is not dark colored will be considered stolen. Agreed, said Levon. Let it be as you have said. Oh, my, th that same day he removed all the male goats that were streaked or spotted, and all the speckled or spotted female goats all that had white on them, and all the dark-colored lambs, and he placed them in the care of his sons. Then he put a three-day journey between himself and Jacob, while Jacob continued to tend the rest of Laban's flocks. Jacob, however, took fresh-cut branches from poplar, almond, and plain trees and made white stripes on them by peeling the bark and exposing the white inner wood of the branches. Then he placed the peeled branches in all the watering troughs so that they would be directly in front of the flocks when they came to drink. When the flocks were in heat and came to drink, they made it in front of the branches, and they bore young that were streaked or speckled or spotted. <laughs> Jacob set apart the young of the flock by themselves, but made the rest face the streaked and dark-colored animals that belonged to Laban. Thus he made separate flocks for himself and did not put them with Laban's animals. Whenever the stronger females were in heat, Jacob would place the branches in the troughs in front of the animals so they would mate near the branches. But if the animals were weak, he would not place them there. So the weak animals went to Laban and the strong ones to Jacob. In this way, the man grew exceedingly prosperous and came to own large flocks and female and male servants and camels and donkeys. Jacob heard that Laban's sons were saying, J Jacob has taken everything our father owned and has gained all this wealth from what belonged to our father. And Jacob noticed that Laban's attitude toward him was not what it had been. Then the Lord said to Jacob, um, I'll, I'll be God as well. Mom, do you want to be Jacob? Sure. Okay. Go, Lord said to Jacob, go back to the land of your fathers and to your relatives and I will be with you. So Jacob sent word to Rachel and Leah to come out to the fields where his flocks were. He said to them, I see that your father's attitude toward me is not what it was before, but the God of my father has been with me. You know that I worked for your father with all my strength, yet your father has cheated me by changing my wages ten times. However, God has not allowed him to harm me. If he said the speckled ones will be your wages, then all the flocks gave birth to speckled young. And if he said the streaked ones will be your wages, then all the flocks were streaked young. For God has taken away your father's livestock and has given them to me. In breeding season, I once had a dream in which I looked up and saw that the male goats mating with the flock were streaked, speckled, or spotted. The angel of God said to me in the dream, Jacob, I answered, here I am. And he said, look up and see that all the male goats mating with the flock are streaked, speckled, or spotted. For I have seen all that Laban has been doing to you. I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed a pillar and where you made a vow to me. 
Now leave this land at once and go back to your native land. Hmm. Then Rachel and Leah replied, Do we still have any share in the inheritance of our father's estate? Does he not regard us as foreigners? Not only has he sold us, but he has used up what was paid for us. Surely all the wealth that God took away from our father belongs to us and our children. So do whatever God has told you. Then Jacob put his children and his wives on camels, and he drove all his livestock ahead of him, along with all the goods he had accumulated in Paddan Aram, to go to his father Isaac in the land of Canaan. When Laban had gone to sh shear his sheep, Rachel stole her father's household gods. Moreover, Jacob received Laban an Aramean by not telling him he was running away. So he fled with all he had, crossed the Euphrates River and is that how you say? Yeah, Euphrates. Euphrates, Euphrates River and headed for the hill country of Gilead. Gilead. Mm -hmm. On the third day, Laban was told that Jacob had fled, taking his relatives with him. He pursued Jacob for seven days and caught up with him in the hill country of Gilead. Then Jacob came to Laban and Aram Aramean <laughs> in a dream <laughs> at night and said to him. Be careful not to do anything to Jacob, either good or bad. Jacob had pitched his tent in the hill country of Gilead when Laban overtook him, and Laban and his relatives camped there too. Then Laban said to Jacob, What have you done? You've deceived me, and you've carried off my daughters like captives in war. Why did you run off secretly and deceive me? Why didn't you tell me so I could send you away with joy and singing the music of tambourines and harp? You didn't even let me kiss my grandchildren and daughters goodbye. Aww. You've done a foolish thing. I have the power to harm you. But last night, the God of your father said to me, be careful not to say anything to Jacob, either good or bad. Now, you have gone off because you have longed to return to your father's house. But why did you steal my gods? Jacob answered Levon. Huh? Uh. I was afraid because I thought you would take your daughters away from me by force. But if you find anyone who has your gods, he shall not live. In the presence of our relatives, see for yourself whether there is anything of yours here with me, and if so, take it. Now Jacob did not know that Rachel had stolen the gods. So Laban went into Jacob's tent and into Leah's tent and into the tent of the two female servants, but he found nothing. After he came out of Leah's tent, he entered Rachel's tent. Now Rachel had taken the household gods and put them inside her camel saddle and was sitting on them. Levon searched through everything in the tent but found nothing. Rachel said to her father, Don't be angry, my lord, that I cannot stand up in your presence. I'm having my period. So he searched but could not find the household gods. Jacob was angry and took Levon to task. What is my crime? He asked Levon, What sin have I committed that you hunt me down? Now that you have searched through all my goods, what have you found that belongs to your household? Put it here in front of your relatives and mine, and let them judge between the two of us. I have been with you for twenty years now. Your sheep and goats have not miscarried, nor have I eaten lambs from your flock. I did not bring you animals torn by a wild beast. I bore the loss myself, and you demanded payment from me for whatever was stolen by day or night. This was my situation. The heat consumed me in the daytime and the cold at night, and sleep fled from my eyes. It was like this for the 20 years I was in your household. I worked for you 14 years for your two daughters and six years for your flock, and you changed my wages 10 times. Mm. If the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac had not been with me, you surely would have sent me away empty-handed. Mm. But God has seen my hardship and the toil of my hands, and last night he refused you. Mm. Levon answered Jacob, The women are my daughters, the children are my children, and the flocks are my flocks. All you see is mine. Yet what can I do today about these daughters of mine or about the children they have born? Come now, let's make a covenant, you and I. Let it serve as a witness between us. 
So Jacob took a stone and set it up as a pillar. He said to his relatives, Gather some stones. So they took stones and piled them in a heap, and they ate there by the heap. Laban called it Jagar Sahadutha, and Jacob called it Galid. <laughs> I guess that means witness heap and witness heap. Ah. Laban said, this heap is a witness between you and me today. That, that is why it, is, it was called Galid. Was that me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That is why it was called Galid. It was also called Mizpah. Which means watchtower. Because he said, May the Lord keep watch between you and me that when we are away from each other. If you mistreat my daughters or if you take any wives beside my daughters, even though no one is with us, Remember that God is a witness between you and me. Levon also said to Jacob, Here is this heap and here is this pillar I have set up between you and me. This heap is a witness and this pillar is a witness that I will not go past this heap to your side to harm you and that you will not go past this heap and pillar to my side to harm me. May the God of Abraham, the God of Nahor, the God of their father judge between us. So Jacob took an oath in the name of the fear of his father Isaac. He offered a sacrifice there in the hill in the hill country and invited his relatives to a meal. After they had eaten, they spent the night there. Early the next morning, Laban kissed his grandchildren and his daughters and blessed them. Then he left and returned home.